Hi, this is Jared Ames with Cinema 5D, and I'm here with Kurt Von Bodinsky of View Factor. Kurt, you're making all these great accessories. Uh, one of them is the cage here for these HDSLRs. What got you into filmmaking? Well, my brother was actually a filmmaker. He went to Academy of Art College, and he was doing some short films, and he found there was a severe lacking quality to a lot of the lower end accessories. So we decided to start a company making motion control systems and that kind of went off into focus systems and then when the HDR cameras came out we decided to start getting into that market. So the cage that we're making is try to you know offset some of the shortcomings of the HDSLR cameras and you know make a little bit stronger structure and you know make it a little bit more cinematic for those that are used to other camera systems be actually able to use it in a regular cinematic capacity. So. The first cage that um, you built was non-powered, but you also have this cool powered cage here that will also power out the camera and all of his ex accessories. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came about building this? Sure. So we started off with the concept of just making a, um, a really rough base plate that just kind of tied into the hot shoe on the top to give it a little more support. Uh, one of the things we found with the camera HDSLRs is that you only have one quarter 20 bolt to mount the camera to, which is uh, a severe shortcoming when you're trying to pull focus with a remote follow focus or with a regular manual follow focus. Uh, a lot of times you'll get the camera rotating back and forth, you'll get it rotating, moving up and down. So we wanted to have something to lock it down, so what we ended up doing is um, making this cage that ties into the base with the pins and the, and the quarter 20 bolt. It also ties into the top of the camera in the hot shoe to avoid the camera from moving anywhere. Uh, the power came in because we noticed that we were spending a lot of time and money on just having all the batteries to run these things. So during a typical shoot during the day, you know, you're changing out a battery three or four times. And when those batteries are 100 bucks a piece, at least they were, um, you know, it's, it's much more efficient to have one battery and just run it all day off that one battery. So the cage uh, actually powers up the camera. It also powers up three accessories with 12 volts regulated power. So you can run things like this uh, light panel, you can run your HDSDI converter, you can run a monitor, everything off one, one battery, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, we also put an infrared emitter in here, so we're actually using the Canon protocol for the remote trigger, uh, so we can start and stop recording using our little Orgo that we've made. Um, we shipped a bunch of these for the RED cameras and we decided to make them work on the, uh, the HDSLRs as well. You also have this nifty little follow focus that controls the lens in camera. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is a new product we're working on. We have, um, we have an existing focus control solution that uh, we've been working on getting out for about two years. It's been a little bit of a long road. Um, we're still in the process of getting that squared away, but the, you know, the HDSLR market is a very good emerging market for just pretty much any accessory maker. So what we decided to do is actually take advantage of the fact that the Canon lenses already have motors in them. Uh, so we figured, okay, if we could figure out how to control those motors externally, then that would be a great product. So what we made is this little uh, HDSLR controller that allows you to uh, remotely start and stop your camera. You can also zoom in and zoom out um, with, the, with the function zoom. Uh, and we also have focus control on it. So this product is going to be uh, around $500 or less. Uh, it runs off Canon NB5L batteries, so just any typical point-and-shoot camera. Uh, and it all goes to the USB port. So the nice thing is that if you're a very low-end filmmaker, you don't necessarily have to buy the cage to make it work. You don't have to buy anything to make it work. You could take a standard HDSLR camera, plug this into it, and you could be pulling focus and starting stopping and have a lot of the functionality that you need uh, to do a typical film shoot. Uh, and you don't have to have all the support equipment to make that happen. So you don't need map box rails or focus motors or anything like that. And what do you guys have planned down the road uh, from View Factor for HDSLR shooters? Do you have some HDMI things going yeah, on? Yeah, so um, you know, pretty much everybody out there is either using the AJA box uh, for converting HDSDI or they're using uh, you know, a Blackmagic uh, box. Uh, the downfalls to these are that they're, you know, they're typically meant for a broadcast industry where it's sitting on a shelf and it's not really meant for cinema. Um, so you always come into this problem, especially when the HDSLRs is that they have the mini HDMI connector on the side, which is very, you know, it's a little bit hard to deal with at times. So what we're doing is we're making, we're manufacturing our own HDSDI converter. It's about a third the size of the Black Magic that will actually bolt on directly to the camera, and it has a connector that ties directly into the HDMI port, so you don't have an HDMI cable in the equation. So at that point, you'll just have HDSDI coming out the back of the camera, so it's, you know, just like any other cinema camera out there. Um, so it makes you know, for integrating into existing workflows for, you know, TV shows and uh, things like that, it makes it much easier to deal with because you can run your video back to Video Village, you can run multiple monitors, uh, makes life just generally a lot easier. So you're not constantly having this, you know, downtime because your HDMI connection broke. Um, so these cages right now, we have them set up for the 5D and the 7D. We may make a 1D Mark IV cage at some point in the future. Uh, it's a little bit 
trickier proposition because of the geometry of that camera, but, um, but the 5D and 7D are working great. Uh, one other product that we're looking at is possibly making this thing work for the, uh, for the TI uh, 550 as well. Thank you.